Hello, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another spicy romance recommendation video. So in the past few months I've been throwing more of these videos out there that are just a random collection of romances basically. Um, ones that maybe I haven't talked about a lot recently or some that were favorites that I used to talk about a lot but now I've you know switched it up for some other ones. Um, also to show off some pretty copies of books that I have. I like to throw those in there. Um, but usually I make very specific or very niche recommendation videos. I have a whole playlist. I have ones that are taboo, ones that are dark, ones that are again really random. Um, but sometimes I like to just be broad and not have to like think about curating the list too much. I just go through my bookshelves or go through my Kindle and I pick, you know, five to ten books that I want to recommend. So all of these books I'm going to share will be listed in the description if you want to grab a copy of them. I do get a little bit of a kickback if you purchase it using my link, but otherwise these are just ones to keep in mind for yourself, okay? So we're just going to go through these. They are through all genres and for the most part they're going to be three chili peppers and above on my like spice scale um, but a couple of them I'll, I'll tell you if they're different than that but we're just gonna go through so the first one I want to share I'm so happy to finally have a copy of this I had books two and three in the series but I didn't have the first one um, but that's gonna be Haven by Rebecca Weatherspoon I love putting Rebecca Weatherspoon into these recommendation videos because her books usually aren't super long but they usually explore a lot of smexy times or kinky times that for, for sure, at least when I was reading these books, I wasn't finding as many books that were touching on that. Um, and this one um, was just really interesting to me. So this book, it's a little bit darker and it does actually start with some very dark stuff, okay? This starts with our heroine, Claudia, who's supposed to be on a week-long getaway with, I believe it's her brother. Yes, she's with her brother in Northern California and they end up being attacked by these men who are out there doing some dirty business and her brother gets killed and she is about to be assaulted and she has to make a run for it and she ends up stumbling into the lawn of this guy named Shepard who he lives a quiet existence in the wilderness with him and his dog and when this woman stumbles into his um, yard and she see he sees people coming after her um, he does what he needs to do to protect her and so she is injured and she's stuck at his home and it's not easy to just get her to safety immediately. Um, but he, I mean, he does. And then there's this like crazy connection between them and they really had this crazy chemistry just from when he rescued her. But he wasn't going to make a move on her because she'd just been through a traumatic experience and she realized she needed to go grieve her brother and like work through everything she just survived. And so that's the setup of our book. And then the bulk of the book takes place after, I can't remember how long it is, um, but there's a certain amount of time. And then she decides that she can't move on until she goes back to see Shep and see if there's something between them and if he can help her get kind of some closure. So again, this is a pretty quick read. You'll probably gobble up the whole series really quick once you read this one. Um, but yes, this one definitely starts out pretty dark and then it gets a little more fun. Completely switching to a more like fun, small towny vibes. Um, an author that I love to talk about on my channel, like I t I've read 95% of her books. There's still like one trilogy that I haven't read by her. Um, but I like to bring up some of her older books sometimes because they just, they're not the ones that are the most popular anymore. So I want to bring up Only You by um, Melanie Harlow. And I think the series is actually called Only Love is like what the series is called. Um, there's like Only You, Only Him, Only Us, like I can't remember. But this one is the first one in it and it's really cute. These ones do, like I don't know how much this one does, but this series even, you start to hear more about the Clover Cloverly Farm starts to like pop up in some of the series, so it's really great. Um, but this one is actually about a divorced attorney named Nate and he has a neighbor and they have kind of this like crazy connection for each other, but she's looking for romance and she knows that he's a playboy. So they, they're they not enemies. This isn't like that kind of thing, but they're also not like super close. Um, even though like they're friends and they have interacted before, right? Um, and then one day a one night stand of his drops his child off on his doorstep and he's completely floundering with this. And so the heroine kind of unwittingly steps in to help 
and there are a lot of beautiful scenes of them helping with his daughter together. So, and then, uh, yeah, and so she starts seeing him with his daughter and starts having all of the twinges, heart twinges, vagina twinges, all the twinges, because who doesn't love a hot single dad? We all do. Here, me. We love it. So, highly, highly recommend. I'm going to say that about every book you guys know. Now, we'll take a trip to some taboo town, because I, I, so there's some of my taboo books that I purchased them way back when I read them, and I haven't pulled them out in a while. So, I can't remember how much I loved this book, but I was like, damn, I haven't talked about this one in forever. So, I pulled it off my shelf. So, this is North by Daniel James, and this one is a stepfather stepdaughter romance. Um, they're not um, currently together. I believe he actually had divorced her mother. Um, he really, you know, had loved her mother, but her mother has a lot of issues. I think it's some mental health and some drug use issues. And so then her mother dies because of her addictions. And she has turned 18 now, I believe, in this one. She is, like, of course, just turned 18, right? This is a taboo novel, okay? And so she turns to her ex-stepfather because she doesn't know where else to go. So she decides to go visit him. Um, and she is also in a lot of, like, she's having a lot of feelings. She has anger and guilt and resentment and depression. And he refuses to kind of let her down. So she decides to go and stay with him for a year. Um... And maybe she's only 17 in this one in that year is when she's... I can't remember if this one is one where she's underage or not. So, again, it's been a long time. But I remember that it moved me, like, so much between these two. Because he wasn't, I believe, her stepfather for, like, that long. Um, and not that that would, like, excuse that there's a relationship. It's taboo. It's not trying to excuse it. But I just remember that they had this really, really great connection. And so... The way I recommend this one is, like, if you like the QB Tyler, that is, like, the stepdad romance, this one was, like, this one moved me even more. It wasn't just about the, like, high heat of the scenario, which that's something that QB Tyler is known for. Like, you get to the steam pretty quick with her books, which is fine. But if you want one where there's a little more, like, build up into the taboo scenario, because that sometimes is what makes it more fun. Like, if we just dive right into it and we're doing it, sometimes we want to build up and get, have those squirmy feelings for a while. And North, North definitely does that. All right. Then we have one that I believe I even have mentioned in one of my um, spicy romance recs not too long ago, but I just got a um, alternate copy of the book. And so we're going to talk about it again because I want to show it. So I got my um, Games with the Orc from uh, Renegade Romance. Um, it's so beautiful. And so this is a book that came out, I think it came out in like December. And it is about this like monster banging company um monster smash agency and so you can um like sign up for or like you can request the kind of monster that you want and the kind of scenario that you'd like to play out and then this agency will match match you with the right monster and so this heroine she uh breaks up with her boyfriend because she's not getting fulfilled from this relationship and um she decides to sign up for a week's worth of fucking with a monster and just she has so many desires and so many kinks she wants to try out and she doesn't even know if she will really want them or not because she's never fully got to try them out and so she is with a professional basically who she knows she'll be safe with and there's lots of rules and protections for her that the agency sets up they're basically in a house that is like protected and she has safe words and all these things but they're able to try out a lot of her kinks so this has so many fun kinks in it right this has um let me see if we have it yeah so this has consensual kink and smut but there's role playing there's a sex work there's primal play there is him being like a soft dom a hard dom there's like all of these in it and it was just so charming um and i mean very smut forward this one is like a four and a half or a five on the smut scale it's very very high out there but it also was really cute because there's a couple twists in here that's great so absolutely beautiful bang on for Catherine moon 
All right, then this is one that I like to bring up every now and then because it just speaks to my heart and I adore it so much. And that is Sustained by Emma Chase. This is my favorite book by Emma Chase. This is a lawyer. He is a playboy. He is a naughty boy. And this book begins with him finding out that he has an STI uh, because a one night stand that he was with, um, her partner had been cheating on her. And so he has to go get like screen and take some antibiotics. So he can't be doing his every weekend banging it out. Like he needs to take a break. And so his friends kind of urge him, why don't you try dating for a couple weeks instead of needing to bang right away? And he's like, I don't need to do that when I can just get the goods whenever I want. You know, he's that type of dude. Okay. He seems like a douche. He seems like a douche. And then one night he gets pickpocketed by this little troublemaker and he once upon a time had someone cut him a break when he was a troublemaker and it actually made his whole life, like it made his whole life, this person giving him a chance. And so he decides to give this kid a chance. And so he, um, he goes to this kid's home and discovers that he doesn't have parents. He has an aunt who is only in her early twenties. She's even like in college still. And she has been uh, handed her five, five or six, six orphan nieces and nephews after her brother and sister-in-law passed. Um, and so Chelsea is her name. And she, all the way from a little kid, all the way to one of them who's only a few years younger than her because she's a teenager, she's completely drowning. And so to see, you know, one of her nephews causing these big issues, it could mean the kids getting taken from her. Um, and Jake, he just falls for these kids and her. He doesn't want to admit it, but he falls for them all right away. And he tells himself it's just because he wants to get in Chelsea's pants, but he's falling for all of them. And one of the other unique things I always like to bring up is Emma Chase actually does this with quite a few of her like earliest books. This is completely from um, Jake's point of view. Um, we never have Chelsea's POV in it at all. And I just think that's really unique. I don't think we do that all the time. And I think it's pulled off very well. And I think the reason it's able to do it is that Chelsea is very transparent, um, you know, and we can see what she's like, we can see what she's feeling through how Jake describes her. And so it really is him that has like the like messed up brain, right? So I absolutely adore this as well as the novella that's called Sidebar that comes after this. And I love it. I love that family. I love visiting them. Then I want to throw up this one is also quite a bit of a darker one. Um, I am trying to complete well, the ones that I want to own, because there are six of her books that I don't care to own. But I'm wanting to complete my Pam Godwin collection because I'm going to a book signing with her at the end of April. And so I have some of her books that I don't always talk about on here the way I talk about that one back there um, that I want to talk about. So this is part of like one of her standalones. She actually has like five or six standalones. Um, and this one is very dark and it's a rock star romance. Um, and so... Then there also is Charlie, who, um, she is on the run. And then we have Jay Maynard, who has his own secrets, and he does drugs. He gets himself into a lot of trouble, and they kind of have this chance encounter. And he just thinks that it's so amazing, and he really wants to, like, see this girl again and see if he can really have something with her, and then her cover is blown and she has to go on the run again. And it is quite a bit later that they run into each other again. And she never saw him in his full rock star persona, like the way that they met. She didn't even fully know who this guy was. And so when they get thrown into each other's orbit again, number one, she has a lot of questions about how is he like this? This isn't who I knew. Granted, she only knew him for like a little bit. So, uh. But also being connected with a rock star who is on tabloids and who is fucking famous is certainly a way for the person chasing her to find her very quickly. So he's definitely bad news for her. But Pam Godwin, she knows how to tear at your heartstrings and also give you such a satisfying um, HEA for what you go through with the characters. So then I want to go to another um, fun uh, monster romance. This one's actually an alien romance and by Tiffany and Robert. Um, and this one is um, 
how do we explain this one? We'll just see back here. So there's an otherworldly warrior, the alien warrior, who is stranded on Earth. And, you know, our government is trying to get a hold of him. Um, and he or they have had a hold of him and he's escaped. And so he happens to pull over the or get this female and kind of like threaten her and try to get her to take him to his ship, I think. I think it was his ship. It's been a while since I read this one. Um to get him to his freedom. And so he had kind of a kidnapped Zoe to help him do that. And so the government agencies are still pursuing them. Um, and Zoe and Rendash, they're trying to race across the country so they can get him out of there. So this guy, he is four armed. He has a special dick, like all the good ones. And Zoe's just this curvy, beautiful lady who is just trying to go about her life. And then this dude, this green forearm dude just crashes into it. So um, this one is just fun. It's one of theirs that doesn't get talked about as much, but this one I believe is a standalone too. So that's nice. Um, not to be confused with like Taken by the Alien Next Door and the other ones in that series, but this one is a standalone. So if you want to, you know, read a fun alien romance, it always has, most of their books have plus size heroines, like a lot of them do. Um, and they just write really sweet romances. I love it so much. And then, um, this one is a more recent release and I finally got a physical copy. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, it's one of my favorite, um, authors. Honestly, I love her stuff. I have read every single book that this author has written and I have never been disappointed. Um, so this is the frat boy by Nikki Sloan. This was book four in her Nashville neighborhood series, but these ones don't have to be read in order. Really the only thing they share I mean, there are some characters from some books and others, but they all take place in the same neighborhood. Um, and so it's kind of cool that way. So this one is actually two college students though, um, but it's not really like college and then both being in college um, and actually both being in uh, uh, Greek, like Greek, uh, what are they called? Sororities, fraternities, Greek life. I can't remember what the generalized term is for it, but he's in a fraternity she's in a sorority and there is this like sorority games that's happening and there's this big scandal that happens between and these two like get in a fight over it and cause problems and so they both get suspended or removed from their groups and for both of them this is very bad like for the hero it's bad because his parents would cut him off if he got kicked out and the heroine she has like a scholarship and she like needs that place to stay so now she's homeless and she really blames this guy that it's his fault this happened um so she ends so she answers this online ad for this house that you can uh live and work at and the type of work at this house is to make porn um, there's this married couple that are actually from like another book by Nikki Sloan. They're in a novella of hers and they have this house all set up for production. You can do solo work, you can do partner work, and it's all set out of like how many videos you have to do to pay for your rent or it can like offset your rent. So if you make this many videos and pay this much money, that's what it is. And they're looking for another man and woman to live and work there. Um, and they understand that for like college students, this could be a really good place to do and this home happens to be in the Nashville neighborhood and who should be there also auditioning because he doesn't have a place to live but uh the guy who got her kicked out of her sorority or at least she blames him for it anyway and so they actually have to do their audition together and I thought it's really cool I love the way that Nikki Sloan looks at sex work um and this one I just thought was so cool because there definitely is like this like begrudging thing from both of them that they're getting so much pleasure from the other person and then there's a phase where they're like this is just work and that's cool with me um and uh yeah i just love it and i love how the other people are incorporated into it as well so this one is super hot um, but i also still loved how the emotions ended up coming into it and then what that looks like when you are both in sex work and you're falling for each other and how that'll work between the two of you at work so there's that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed these recommendations. Again, they're all linked down below if you want to check them out um, and check out my playlist with my other random spicy romances as well as the oddly specific ones that I have for you too. So thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.